Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use the new .NET 7's capability to compile your C Sharp code into native code. Yes, native code, just like Go, Rust, C++, C and all these languages. There will be no VM, no intermediate language compilation, no. There's also no JIT, we just compile directly into native code. Now, even though we can technically do it at this point, we're also going to take a look at the limitations and why it's probably far from something that you will realistically use. If you like the above content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell, and for my full length courses, check out nickchapsters.com. Now, just a quick reminder, I will be in all of these conferences the upcoming months, delivering my in-person introduction to effective testing in c -sharp and .NET two-day workshop, so if you want to sign up for any of those, check the links down below. Okay, so let's take a look at what I have here first before I explain what native AOT is and how it works. So I have two applications here that basically have the exact same content and they're both .NET 7 applications and there's no magic in here, they're just console applications and they have effectively the exact same structure. The reason why I'm separating them is just so I can build them separately and compare the two and they both have the exact same code. So I'm getting an input, and then I'm using a stopwatch to calculate how long it takes to find the nth prime number. Now, you don't really need to know what this is doing behind the scenes, just know that this is a very CPU-intensive operation, and it will allow us to get a bit of a benchmark between how long things take to execute. Now, what I have in this terminal is that in the left pane, I'm in the normal application folder, and in the right pane, I'm on the AOT, the Ahead of Time Compilation folder. And what I want to do first is just execute the application. So I'm just going to say .NET run, and I'm going to say 750,000. So if I run this, it will take that value and try to find those prime numbers. And as you can see, this took a while. It took four and a half seconds. And then I'm pressing any key to exit. But if I go ahead and I run this in release mode, release mode will do some optimizations behind the scenes. And as you can see now, this takes three seconds, which is way better. Now, up until now, you had a few options when it comes down to building your .NET application. The most common one would be to say .NET, publish, and then you would have, let's say, C release, and you would publish your application for release mode, and as you can see, it has been published here. I could simply navigate there, and if I run the exact same exe that's in release mode with all of the optimizations, it takes three seconds to find those numbers. If we take a look into this publish folder, you will see that our exe and DLL are very, very small. This is because these applications are expected to run in an environment that already has .NET installed on it. Now, .NET, the runtime or the VM, is actually quite big, but you only install it once and you're fine, you don't need to worry about this. And to understand how that comes together, you can think of it like this, where you have C Sharp, Visual Basic, F Sharp, and really any other language can have a compiler that compiles it into this IL stage or intermediate language, which you can see over here. So if I go to my IL viewer and I build my project, then you will see the instructions that are generated from the compiler. This is everything the compiler just basically makes on the right over here. And all of that is taken by the CLR, which is the VM. And then you also have runtime JIT compilation. And this eventually spits out native machine instructions. So this is quite the elaborate process, but it allows us to make this bit over here only native. And then the IL language, the intermediate language can be cross-platform, which makes the language cross-platform. Now for quite some time now, .NET has given the option to those who want to publish to to run these applications to a machine that doesn't have the runtime installed uh, to do it by publishing what is a self-contained application. And if I do end up running it, then as you can see, this generates quite a lot of files in here. But yes, then you can take this application and it will run in that architecture, in this case, Win64, without any problems. Now, the problem with that is that even though it runs, there's just a lot of files in there. So we're given the option to publish a single file if we wanted to for that specific architecture in the self-contained fashion. So I'm just going to add self-contained back in. And now if I run this, this will take longer to build. But as you can see now, I only have a single exe. This is just uh, debug symbols. So yeah, now great. I only have one file, but because the whole runtime has to basically be packaged in it, it's 73 megabytes. And for such a small program, this is a lot. Now, there's things like trimming and tree shaking, and you can reduce that significantly, but this is still not optimal. Even though it can execute natively, you still have basically the runtime 
packaged in there and it runs in the same fashion as before but just as a one file where you don't have to install the runtime you just package it with that file and this will make startup significantly slower that being said the app will still run very very fast you can see three seconds over here now native aot tries to address all that you don't need to package the runtime with everything you don't need to ship a huge exe what you can do, it's the approach that Go, C++, Rust, and all those languages take where you just compile your C Sharp into native code. It's no longer IL, it's no longer a published runtime, it is just machine-specific native code. Now, because .NET 7 is not officially out yet, we're in RTM stage at this point, you'd have to add this NuGet source uh, just so you can pull all the packages needed to do that. But once you do that, what you can do is go to your project and say .NET publish for a specific architecture in release mode, and then set the publish AOT flag to true. Now, I should point out here that those things starting with P are parameters that you can actually set in your CS prods. So I could say this as well if I didn't want to pass it down as a command, but because I want to do everything in the command line and show you that you can do it in the command line, I'm not going to have it here. So back here, if I do this now, this will again take some time, but as you can see, it will generate native code code for Windows 64. The list of things you can compile into is actually extensive. You can have Mac, Linux, you can have anything you really want. And this now means I can go here and run this exe. And actually, let's do the same thing on the left. So on the left, I have the runtime that is packaged in that exe. And on the right, I have the native AOT exe, the one that's compiled into native code. And I'm going to run both and see how they compare. Now, as you can see, they basically run in exactly the same time. However, if I go into the native EXE, I will see that it's only 2.9 megabytes, which for just a small program like this is still a lot, but this is native code running on my architecture. There is no runtime, there is no jitter, there is no nothing. Now, as you can see, that doesn't mean it is faster. It can be faster, but the CLR and the jitter are also very fast. So you're competing with something that is already pretty, pretty fast. And of course, you can ignore this. This is just debug symbols. So the actual application is just this one. Something else I want to show you is that the normal application, the one that is running with the package CLR, is 4.8 bytes of memory during runtime, while the AOT one is only one megabyte. So we also use less memory in runtime. And the startup is basically instantaneous. It is way, 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 way faster to start up, which makes it great for things that run in containers or things that run into, let's say, lambdas in the cloud. Now, does this mean you can take this now and turn your APIs into native applications and benefit from less memory consumption and potentially better performance? Well, not really, at least not yet. And that's because there's limitations with this. For example, you can't really have any dynamic assembly loading and there's no support for runtime code generation using things like reflection.emit. So it really limits what you can do and what libraries are doing. And then if you want to support native AOT, then your library has support as well. So for now, this is only technically possible for console applications and class libraries. And I think they're gonna expand eventually, but for now it's very, very limited. However, it's really, really cool. And I definitely have an eye on this to see how we can potentially use it. In fact, this technically can be used now in AWS with lambdas. So in a future video, I'm gonna show you how you can do that. But what do you think? Do you think that this is cool? Have you played around with this before? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreon for making the videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.